Hello, this is now part three of my explanation of what my song, A Fairy Tale, means. It is a spiritual song, and the last two stanzas of the second part, the second uh, part of the song with words, goes like this. I would sing of a glorious kingdom and a woman who left her throne. This is the woman who left her throne. I would sigh and tell a tale of the king who searched alone. If I could tell a story of this man and the woman his queen, then I could tell a fairy tale that all the world has seen. The Bible is like a seamless garment. The Bible tells a story, the same story from beginning to end. The Bible is the Word of God, as we learn in John chapter 1, and also as we see in the beginning in Genesis chapter 1, where God said, and then things came into being. The Bible contains actual history, and it contains exactly what God wants it to contain. God spoke through men who then wrote down what he told them by his Holy Spirit. He chose only a few stories of the millions upon millions, billions upon billions, trillions upon trillions of stories that he could have told. He tells only a few stories in the Bible. And all of these stories together weave a seamless garment. Remember, Jesus spoke only in parables. This is what the apostles say, that whenever he spoke, he spoke in a parable. A parable is a story that tells a spiritual truth. Well, think about it. If Christ is our creator, if he's the one who spoke and it came into being, if he's the one who, by his Holy Spirit, anointed people to write down what he wanted written down, doesn't it make sense that everything that's written in the Bible is also a parable? See, the Bible is historically accurate, but it is also an allegory. It's also a parable. It tells a story. And the woman, this woman who left her throne, is one of the preeminent parts of the entire story. It begins with Eve. Eve left her throne in Eden, forcing her husband to leave his throne to, be, to remain one with her. Well, in the same way, God's wife, who has been variously described in Scripture as, for example, Israel, Ahola, Aholaba, and the bride of Christ. God's bride has sinned just like Eve sinned. And this is a picture of God's bride who has left her throne and now she's in a wilderness and she's beset with evil spirits. Birds in the scripture are evil spirits, demons, the demonic. So here she is in the wilderness and she is beset by the demonic. 
And so the song proceeds. From here, once again, we see the picture of the man who is searching for her, which in the beginning is Adam, and then it becomes Christ himself. And so Christ also left his throne. The scriptures say that he left the place, his domain in heaven, in order to take the form of a man. Can you imagine that? We really can't. We're talking about the eternal God who leaves his place in heaven, and takes the form of a man. Why? In order to save his bride. In order to remain one with his bride. Remember, as Paul discusses this, he talks about how a man shall leave his mother and father and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one. But then he says, I speak in a mystery, for this relates to Christ and his church. Everyone in the church believes that they are the bride of Christ, but they don't understand, most do not understand, what a life of harlotry, rebellion, and sin they live. They simply don't they simply don't see it. They don't understand it. So Christ searches for each one, just like the good shepherd would leave his 99 sheep that are saved. Christ will search for each one of his sheep in order to save every single one. And as the song proceeds, we then come to this picture. Here we find the woman. She's in the wilderness. What a vast wilderness she's in. But she's now walking on a narrow path. We see her here in white garments. And it's because we will only be clothed in white garments if we walk the narrow path. Does that mean that we earn our salvation? Does that mean that by my good works, I then am saved? I then become the bride of Christ? No, because I can never do it good enough. I can never be good enough. There is always the chance that I would fall off of that path or walk off of that path in any number of ways. But this is what we see next, is that the woman has begun her walk of obedience. She's on the narrow road, but she's still in the wilderness. And that image is followed by this one. Sometimes that path, that narrow path, is filled with light. And then, what joy! How wonderful it is! I can remember back to the beginning days of my walking the, the narrow path, now over 40 years ago. The sense of the presence of God was very great in those days. And so this path, this is still the narrow path. It's a path of light. It's a path where you, we feel the presence of God. But yet, that isn't the way it always is. Because the next image is this one. The narrow path, but it's very forlorn, forlorn. 
Some would say it even looks haunted. We have the water of life here in the path. But if we leave the path and go off the path into the dryness and the darkness, then we will miss God. But the path, this picture is here because the path that we follow is not an easy path. Once we begin to walk with the Lord, we go through many times of testing. Testing of our faith where we feel often desolate. We don't feel the presence of God. But we need to continue on the path. How do we do that? We stay in his word. We read his word over and over and over again. Read a little bit of the Bible every day if you don't. It's so important. And so at this point, the woman is still walking the path. But it's a hard path. The song then returns to the beginning four stanzas that go, If I could see into you, if I had eyes to see, if I could see inside of you, then all at once I'd be free. And so here is a picture of the light shining into the darkness. Our goal is to have the light of God fully illuminate us. To be so bright that we can even look into the sun, that we can, that we can literally look into the face of God and not die. That's what our goal is. So I'm returning back to the theme that the song begins with because our prayer always needs to be that we have eyes to see that we have ears to hear, so that we can stay on the path, so that we can walk in God's way, even when the path gets dark and desolate. The song then continues if I could tell a story of a man and a woman in love, then I would tell the story hidden in the stars above. I would sing of once a kingdom and a woman who lost her throne. Again, here is the woman. I would sigh and tell the tale of the king who left his home. If I could tell a story of a man and a woman named Eve, then I could weave a fairy tale that none would ever believe. Eve, in an allegory, Eve depicts the bride of Christ. Here is the woman. She has walked the narrow way, and now she waits. There's nothing more she can do. She waits. Well, there's one more thing that she can do, and that is to watch, which is the next picture but one. And we need to look at one more picture because here is a picture of the man who left his throne. The man who left his throne who finally slays the dragon finally slays the one that tempted the woman to begin with. And this picture is interesting because here we see a man who depicts Christ, who slays the dragon, who slays Satan, but yet behind him is a picture of 
the woman who left her throne who has not repented. Here is a woman. Here is the woman, Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great. Here is a man making obeisance to her. Here she is outside of her, her now, now her castle. She says, I sit as a queen and will never be alone. This is the unrepentant woman who demands that people obey her. And if they don't, she will kill them. Here is the unrepentant woman who seduces the world by her immorality. But here is the king who now comes to destroy the demonic spirit that empowers her. And so the story of the Bible is a story of two women. A story of the carnal woman, Eve, and the spiritual woman, the bride of Christ. The question is, which of these women do we identify with? Which of these women are we? In the book of Jeremiah, chapters 50 and 51, and in the book of Revelation, chapters 17 and 18, God tells his people to come out of Babylon. God's people still partake of Babylon the Great. God's people still partake of idolatry, adultery, sin, and every form of evil. But Christ came to deliver us from the bondage of this woman. So in the next picture, what we see is, before that last picture, we saw the woman waiting. Now we see the woman watching. Here again, we come to the woman who is being obedient to the way of Christ, who is walking the narrow road, who sees the kingdom of God from afar. She's watching. She's waiting for her king. She's watching, she's waiting for her husband. And finally, that woman is clothed in righteousness. In purity. That woman is the bride of Christ. That woman is ready now to meet her king. To see him face to face. She is now clothed in white linen. Her righteous deeds because she indeed chose the way of righteousness. And so, the next picture shows the king and the queen finally united because she chose the way of righteousness. And now, they stand as husband and wife as one. The two have become one. Paul said, I tell you in a mystery. And I speak of Christ and his church. The two shall become one. And finally, we see the woman in her glory. 
total perfect humility crowned with the stars one with her husband forever because she now is perfect perfect just as her husband who left his throne to seek her is perfect. Father, in Jesus' name, perfect your people. 